Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Minecraft plugin development tutorial. Today we are going to be making some very advanced menu systems with animated titles, animated buttons. Not sure if you've seen that, but this button's actually moving, and as well as animated icons, just as this one, and you can click on that to enter another menu. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun. This video uses my foundation library framework, which helps you make Minecraft plugins like this. If you haven't seen the last video where I show you how to install foundation, please do so now, pause this video, go back, and I'll see you here again in just a few minutes. If you, however, do not want to use any, any library of mine, then don't watch this video because I already have I'll made over 60 videos without foundation, just on paper and spigot, including a full GUI. You can find it in the free micro plugin development playlist. However, today we are going to be making uh, use of foundation because it just makes things a lot of easier. Step number one is to know how to make a micro plugin. Again, if you've never made a micro plugin, I do have 60 videos completely for free on this channel. I also have a full programming school called Mine Academy. Uh, the link to it is in the this video description you can check that out step number two is to install foundation i covered this for free in the last video of mine on this youtube channel and then step number three is finally make a new class for example menu one and then make this class extend the menu class from from or mine academy fo package how beautiful that's it now you're done you can literally uh, open up this menu although it'll be completely empty so what do we have to do we have to make a constructor right here and we have to start making a couple of buttons for example i'm just going to make the current time button right here and then the button class will be imported from again mine academy fo menu button package just like that now this menu you can use a couple of utility features. If you are a beginner, I do recommend you set the slot number two visible because we'll be dealing with slots a lot and you'll see each of these uh, icons in the menu as a slot. You can also disable this, of course, when you're done. And then we can set the size of this menu. So menu can be from nine slots to nine times, I think, six. If you do anything more than that, you'll see the texture being a bit uh, flickery. So don't do that. We can just go with menu being nine times three. And we can also, go, we can of course, also set the title of this menu, which can be, I don't know, my first animated menu and depending on a micro version you can specify up to i believe 32 characters or even 64 if you are coding for 1.8 i think the cutoff is at around 16 letters so your titles has to be quite short and you can of course use even colors in here foundation already has support for colors using the legacy character which is just a very very clean way to do it now to make a new button I'm not going to cover all the ways to make a new button. I'm just going to show you the most common and most simple way to make a new button. The oldest way and the most verbose way to make a new button is just to make a new button anonymous class just like that. If you make that, uh, you'll notice you have to override two methods. Number one being what happens when I click on the menu. So what we can do, since we have access to the menu class from this instance, we can just call animate title. Oh, hello. Hello there. And I'll show you what this does in a moment. And then when it comes to actually rendering the button, we have to return an item stack. Now, you can either just create your own little item stack, as you will, or what you can do, you can use our foundational item creator class, which is a beautiful, simple way to make items. You, you can already see uh, we got a bunch of options right here. I'm just going to go with the simplest option, which is the comp material and then string and then lore. So comp material, I'm just going to go with the clock and then the title of this item is going to be current time and then the lore is actually going to be the value now you can do something like this system dot get uh, no system dot current time millis however this is obviously going to print out the long long number and you have to use java to format this so thankfully foundation already provides you with the time util and you can just call get formatted date just like that and we will do the formatting for you now the item creator class uh, is not an item stack so you have to call make just like that to turn this into an item stack and you'll notice that there's a lot of options 
that you can do. You can glow, make this item glow. That means we will um, apply an invisible enchant. You can add enchants uh, to the item. You can hide the tags. You can even uh, create schools using school owner and school your own. There's a lot of stuff. You can even, uh, if the material is a written book, you can call book pages and book title, book author. So there's a lot of helper methods for you to to have fun with and you can even drop the item at a given location or my favorite you can just give it to a player great that's pretty much it now when it comes to positioning this button there are three ways to position a button the easiest way to position the button is to use the position annotation make sure to import it from the right package you can see it on the screen just like that and inside the position annotation there is two options number one being the value which is the slot so this one can be either let's say i want to make it at ninth plus fifth slot so slot number 14 let me uh, let me actually compile this and show you how this will work and by the way foundation doesn't only cover guis it also provides you with a full command framework so if you want to make a command in foundation this is literally it this is it no need to register it in the main plugin class no need to use plugin.yml i'm not going to spend too much time on commands in this video out of respect of your time i may make another video just for commands but here you have it an example command they'll simply make sure that i am running it as a player not as a console and then display uh, the menu so the way you display menus always always make a new instance for each player each time you want to display the menu to him and then call the display to menu also a quick tip if you want to get the menu that a certain player has you can just call the foundation menu class just like that and here you have the get menu static method for the player all right let me type in menu test and now i can see it says my first animated menu and we can see all the slot numbers and let's say i want to position it to the center which is slot number 13 by the way if i click it can see hello there the title is being animated very very nicely so let's go back to this menu what you can either do you can either type in 13 right here or the position comes with the start position value or option if you will so you can just call the start equals to start position center this is automatically going to calculate the center position and there is even a more advanced feature if you want to display this menu uh, this button for example minus two slots from the center what you can do you, you can keep the start position to the center and then the value actually is going to be minus two and this is how it's going to look like now some people may not want to use an annotation because you may need to change the position of these buttons depending on you know the player's permissions or your plugins settings in that case you can simply put in the slot number inside the button right here such as what was that 13 or 14 so the button itself can also accept the slot numbers what you can also do you can also get the center slot using the center slot method minus two and this should yield i'm 99 sure that this is going to yield the same outcome okay this is the second way now some people can't really uh, put in the slot right here due to some dynamic menu initial initialization you know if you have advanced needs you can even override the get slot right here i'm also going to give you a little trick if you do need to have a player somewhere in the constructor all you're going to do is type in player player inside the constructor right here and then inside right here you can just call you can either put the same or you can just make a static method display to so you call menu display this get player and this is going to be a static method inside your menu class this which is going to call this to avoid calling get player uh two times so this is also one way how people how plugin developers can use it foundation is super flexible so that it really can match all of your needs all right let me just get the center slider right here let me make sure this button is at the center now question how do we make this button actually um animate the date the formatted date as you can see it doesn't do anything right by default foundation is extremely performance efficient obviously if we would to refresh all the buttons in every single menu even if people don't want to do that it will just lag the server unnecessarily so we have to actually add an animation the way you can do that you can actually override the method called on post display which is called every single time a player is about to see well it's called right after the player has 
this menu displayed. You can delete the super because there's nothing inside this method and inside right here. You can just call this animate and there's two methods. One goes in the main thread, which is the safest one. And you can basically start an animation that is being refreshed every tick, which means 20 times per second, which means very, very fast. So be careful with that regarding performance. I do recommend maybe having 20 right here. So once per second, the, the button will get refreshed. And then here you can either type in a new menu runnable, which is just a, an enchanted runnable that automatically stops when the menu is being closed. And guess what? Foundation already comes with the method called redraw buttons. This one is in the menu class. This one is just going to basically go over an internal hash map that tries its best to uh, get all the buttons from the fields that you have in the class. This is how it can look like. Now, obviously, you can replace this with Lambda and you can even replace Lambda with a method reference to have it very nicely on one line. And for testing sake, I'm just going to go with one right here uh, so that it's a bit faster. Now, here we are back in this menu and we have current time that is now properly updating itself and it still works as it's supposed to be. Although again, guys, I am not going to recommend using very low values such as one. All right. That is how to make a single page menu. Now, when it comes to making multiple pages, the easiest way I do recommend having just an inner class. So private final class, I don't know, another page right here and you can extend the menu again. Uh, there is a class called menu page, which I may cover in one of the future videos that will simply make it very easy for you to put, uh, put a list of things, for example, put monster eggs or put mini game arenas right there and it, it'll create pages automatically with you know the arrow to go back and the arrow to go forward in pages very very useful indeed now let's just make a simple menu right here this is how it's going to be looking like so i made a private final class and i don't i don't even think that we really need to uh, make this class final so this class extends a menu it has a set day button because why not and i want to make sure that it displays on the center just like this one and it has the following title another menu page now i wanted to spice things up a little bit so the get item actually returns my own player head with my own player name. Now you may be wondering how the hell can I get a player? So as I've shown you, sometimes you may need to put the player in the constructor. However, when it comes to on click the menu, you already have the player available. And when it comes to getting the item, you can actually call get viewer because get item is actually called after the viewer of the menu has been set. If you need to set the viewer anywhere earlier, you can simply set the viewer here. Please note this method doesn't actually um, display the menu to a different player. It is purely to just just set the viewer field. Now, when I click with this, I want to simply get to the player world, uh, get to the player's world, and then set the time to 1000 and then simply animate the title saying time has been set. So let's just set the time to night, just like that. And then let's open up the menu. Oh, by the way, I forgot to teach you how to open up another menu class. I think by this point, it should be very easy. Again, same way as we did the first menu in the command. So you just make a new instance, another new, another menu page, uh, another page, and then call display to, and you have player at your disposal right here. Anyways, right here, let's just click this button. So we're going to click this button and then new menu will be open just like that. And then you can see my own head right here, which is kind of uh, it's weird. It's off because I'm running on a cracked server and I'm not authenticated. But if I click it, there you go. Now we can see the day has been set. Very, very good. Now, when it comes to protection, right? If somebody is going to make an anvil with another menu page chest, just like this one, and I attempt to place this and I open it, you can see that foundation handles all of your security problems automatically. So you don't have to worry about players being able to open up your, uh, your hard coded, hard coded menus from, you know, renaming chest on an anvil. By the way, a quick tip. Yes, there is a method called new button menu, which you can open up the menu right here and it's going to basically make this code a little bit shorter however then you are going to be stuck with the position annotation because this one doesn't take in the uh, slot inside the button i don't want you guys to go crazy with this i just want to start use or start using foundation at a simplest possible way now talking about simple so back in the days when i first started there was there was in fact there still is a method called get item add 
which will simply, it's a very primitive method, they'll simply return an item for a given slot, right? So for example, if I wanna match if the slot is zero, then you can simply return a new item stack, I don't know, material, diamond, or you can use the item creator to uh, get yourself some red stained glass paint. And this is going to look like as follows. So when I open up the menu, the first one is the red button. The reason I don't really recommend using it because previously you would even render the buttons using this approach. So instead of calling the button, where is it? The get center slot, you could just call if this get center slot, if this slot is the center slot, return the uh, the current button get item. This is very problematic because first of all, the button will not get properly animated. And second of all, if you have multiple buttons with the same item, they are not going to be, be properly clickable because they will conflict. So do not use this for buttons. Do not use this for buttons. Again, only use it for custom item stacks. This method is a little bit more advanced. Uh, maybe you can use it for later. Now, you may notice at the beginning of this video, we used to have a door right here, magic door. That door is called the button to go back. Now, but by default, Foundation supports that. So all you have to do in the another menu is call a super constructor. And you can see that you can actually put in the parent menu in the super constructor. And you can even say whether when we go back, we should make a new instance of the parents menu. Now, if you go with the new instance, let me just teach this to you. So we can either just go here with the parent like this. And then when you are displaying the parent, you can either just call the old menu like this. Or if you are like me, you are a nerd, what you can do, you can just call the uh, menu one dot this. It's a bit of a trick, okay? Ninja tricks in Java to basically go outside of this class and inside of this class's instance, and uh, that way Java will automatically return the previous uh, menu. Now, pay attention, you cannot make your class static. If you do, you cannot use this. Uh, certainly not by calling uh, classes outside of your class's scope. Okay, so this is the second more hacky or more nerdy way to do that. Very simple. Now, as I mentioned, sometimes you will need to put in a true right here to uh, make a new instance of menu one. If you do, for example, because you have some stuff in the constructor that needs to get refreshed. Every time I wanna go back into the previous menu, you wanna refresh the stuff, you need to make a new instance. If you do make a new instance, for example, if you have some, I don't know, menu mode, or I don't know, let's say you have like mini game or time right here, right? You, you have some field right here that you wanna use. And this is where people get a bit, um, get a bit stuck. And you just call, a new instance foundation cannot really create a new instance because it cannot really figure out what the time is and it cannot really pair the old time with the new time right here so what do you have to do you have to actually override new instance right here and you have to manually give foundation notice how to make the menu one like this and then you can either put in your own new value or you can simply just pass uh, the last value like this one and this is going to work uh, properly again this is more on the advanced node but i know people who have custom needs will surely benefit from that so i'm just going to cover this but you know for now i'll just delete that maybe i can comment this out when i open up the menu now what you can see this is quite cool you can open up the another menu and now the return back icon appeared automatically. Foundation is very smart. It'll automatically pair it back. So when I go back, it will automatically go back to the previous menu and all of the buttons should uh, be rendered properly. And even the animation continues to function. Now, what happens if I open up the current time? What happens with the animation? It'll simply be canceled. Now, question people ask me, can I change the doors? Can I change the label and the item? The answer is yes. What do you have to do? However, you have to go to the on plugin start, go to the button return back right here. And here you can simply set the lore material title, or if you completely want to customize the item, you can just set the item stack right here for the doors. Uh, you can even, as you've seen, button, no, set 
where is that i think it's in the button class not the item there we go button so you can even set something called info button what is an info button well if you have for example this menu class right here you can override get info right here as well as where the button should be located by default there is an option for you to have like an info informational uh, button at the left bottom corner and you can simply override here you can create a new array string and you can simply describe what the menu is doing now when i open up the menu you can see a new menu information icon appears right here this is a dummy button and you can simply say whatever you want i do recommend plugin developers keep your menu pages consistent so every goddamn page has the icon at the bottom left corner and then every sub page has the same icon this is how we design foundation we designed foundation to help you make you know high high quality plugins not just any plugins but actually write clean consistent code that's why there is a clean consistent way to uh, get back to the previous menu as well as provide menu information okay guys there you have it i actually had to cut this video here because my throat is still a bit weak i was sick this week and i prefer much rather to give you valuable insights sites in two videos rather than uh, making a you know medium quality one video so i'm going to cut it right here you now know how to use foundation to create you know multi-page menu system and in the next video i'm going to be showing you what i promised at the beginning where the little title of the menu was animating the buttons were moving around as well as i can show you some bonus stuff such as how to add uh the how to use the menu page which is pretty cool as well as how to make how to let players put I items in your custom menus and how to store items in your custom menus it's going to be pretty cool and I'll see you there. By the way, if you want to learn more about making amazing Minecraft plugins, again, we have a full course for you. It is a fully, uh, full extensive course called Project Orion. Contains seven weeks of content. Contains myself personally twice per week helping you out on Zoom coaching calls which are completely on demand so you always have access to uh, the videos you can always watch them whenever you have time you can always download the source codes and when you have any questions twice per week you can just jump on a call with me and i'll help you out again i'll leave a link to that program in the video description and uh see you there